Today, in 3D printing, we take a look at some 3D printed masks that have passed clinical tests. Then, we turn the temperature way up and dive into a new world of 3D printing. And finally, we talk to a maker and learn about a new way to mod your 3D printers. Make the Masks is on a mission. Print a mask, work with your community, and help save lives during COVID-19. The need for PPE during this pandemic inspired Dr. Dusty Richardson, Dr. Spencer Zog, and Colton Zog to create the Montana Mask, a 3D printable and reusable face mask capable of being custom fitted to the wearer's face and sanitized in between uses. StormTech is the Wisconsin team for Make the Masks, and as of filming, they have donated 350 Montana masks and are able to produce 50 completed masks per day. While this mask is not FDA approved, the FDA has cleared a path for non-approved PPE to be used during a pandemic. This is not a direct replacement for an N95 mask, though the Montana mask has passed testing in clinical settings in more than one location. The score of 200 means that it's an excellent fit. It means that we're not seeing any particles coming through the mask, through the tubing into the machine. Um, it is generally about the highest it will quantify is at 200. The mask got good reviews from medical staff testing at various facilities. It's used by medical staff all over the Midwest right now, as well as our staff at StormTech. Said Brian Kaysen, CEO of StormTech, the mask was worn for a full shift by a nurse in Billings, Montana. After being worn for the day, the mask was swabbed, sanitized, then swabbed again. The swabs were rubbed on a standard agar petri dish for 72-hour bacterial study. The results? The petri dish from the mask before cleaning showed bacteria growth. The petri dish from the mask after cleaning showed no bacteria growth. StormTech is using Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1 3D printers to print the masks in PLA filament. And there are guidelines on the Make the Masks website for medical facilities to learn how to properly put on and take off the mask, as well as how to properly clean and use. This is exciting as we have a clinically tested 3D printable mask that is effective at filtration, plus a bacterial study has shown this PLA mask can be adequately cleaned for reuse. We've featured all kinds of materials here on 3D Printing Nerd. All sorts of plastics, resins, various metals, and even clay. But this new 3D printing material is clearly one that needs some attention. In Melbourne, two engineers with a background in metallurgy and corrosion are bringing glass into the world of additive manufacturing. Both Darren Feenstra, a PhD candidate at Melbourne's Monash University, and Professor Nick Berbilis have a new approach to printing the material that typically requires a hot end to reach temperatures nearing 1000 degrees centigrade. Feenstra, originally from Toronto, wasn't keen on giving away the production secrets at Maple Glass Printing, but he was willing to tell us some of the issues they had to overcome. You have to print in a chamber at a controlled temperature, so we're printing into a chamber that's controlled around 700 degrees because we don't want it to crack, and then we have to anneal it afterwards. The phase transformation is very complex as it goes from a solid into annealing temperature into a working temperature to the glass transition temperature before it even gets to a liquid. The thing we need to get our head around is that we needed to really optimize the amount of heat we put into the system to give us the window and the flexibility to operate across all those temperatures. The goal is to be able to print at 0.6 millimeters and to have build speeds that are comparable to current mainstream FDM printers with a build volume roughly the size of a bottle of wine. One of the really cool applications for this technology is the recycling of glass. Typically, glass recycling is a headache. Mixing glass can result in an unappealing color, have different melting points, have varying degrees of contamination, and can just be a complicated process. But by using additive manufacturing, maple glass printing can control a lot of those complications. While the work over at maple glass printing is exciting, it certainly isn't the only research being done in the field of 3D printing glass. There's a group at MIT that have been developing large-scale glass extrusion over the last several years. Germany's Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, which uses light cured polymer mixed with glass nanoparticles. And researchers at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory are printing optical quality glasses that are on par with commercial glass products currently on the market. With all the progress being made in the field, hopefully we can feature some 3D printed glass benches here on the channel sooner rather than later.
If you own a 3D printer, there is a good chance you've either modified it or you will be modifying it. Makers do this because they want their machine to perform better or have the ability to print with more materials or just if they want it to look cooler. The channel Proper Printing has done some crazy modifications to his 3D printers, such as allowing them to fold in half. We caught up with John at Proper Printing to find out what drives him to make these modifications and get a glimpse as to what his future holds. Have a look. John, what I really want to know is how did you get started with your Ender 3 and making it foldable? A couple of months ago, we had a presentation from a well-known chef who makes, uh, he is known for printing food. It was a nice presentation and the way he, well, the printer, the, it uses a syringe. And uh, a colleague of mine, he said, that's exactly the same syringe as what we use at work for uh, uh, loop and all that kind of stuff. So, and I thought printing food would be cool, but I wanted to make a food printer and take it on the road with me to start printing at a, a chef's restaurant because I'm not good at making food, and uh, but I'm good at printing. <laughs> So it would be a great combination. But in order to, to get it there, I thought it would be awesome if I can fold it and uh, put it in a, a box or in a trolley. So that's how I started it. So so let's go to the CR10S5 then. That's one of the ways where I really got to know who you were. How did you think to to make the gantry mobile? What 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 thought process got you there? I have bought it already and I didn't have that idea at first. And I was just looking at the picture of the CR10 S5 uh, on my screen. And it, the idea just popped in uh, into my mind. I wanted to make it uh, a, a Core XY printer, and, but I thought it was uh, a bit too difficult. I don't want to make this printer the best printer ever. I wanted to make rims for a car. And I saw those, those V-slot uh, beams at the bottom. Uh, it should be possible to uh, make it uh, move on uh, those beams. So when I came up with the idea, I thought, this, this is too simple. This, I must uh, overlook something. Yeah, I tried it and it works way better than I expected. <laughs> and as I've mentioned in the video, I had three stages. The first was to get it run in the first place. The second stage would be uh, to make uh, an, a gantry at the top. And my first step, or my third step would be uh, adding a second belt at the top. So then all a wiggle is removed. Well, let's, uh, let's call it good right there. We've chatted for a while. This was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot yeah. for having me. It was a Thanks, pleasure. John. We'll uh, see each other again. This won't be the last time we uh, we meet up for epic times. <laughs> nice. And ready, ready? Cheers. You got your yes. coffee handy? Where I is have it? my water right. here. Eh? There, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> there we go. Cheers. Hey, see you later, John. We'll, uh, we'll chat soon. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye. A big thanks for joining us today. If you have any news tips you'd like to share, reach out via email, news at todayin3dprinting.com. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you on the next one.